There's the old adage, knock and it shall be opened unto you. <laughs> Phrase that came to me during the teaching today was, let yourself in. Whenever you go somewhere where you're really welcomed, that's what they say. Let yourself in. And you open the door and walk in. It's no big deal. You feel welcomed. You feel ready. You received. They're waiting for you. And it's a comfortable thing. It's not locked. It's not barred from your possibility. It's just there. Walk in. And... What keeps you from doing that? Why do you ring the doorbell? I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong <laughs> to ring the doorbell. It still will be a possible phrase, let yourself in, meaning the door is already open. You can knock, but let yourself in. But there is a kind of asking that comes, that comes through the knock, the approach to the space that you want to enter. And you don't have to have somebody welcome you. The welcome is already in place. The welcome is so large that you almost don't know how to deal with it. It is the biggest hug you have ever received from anybody. And it's just come on in, let yourself in. And the very space itself does this. And it's not hidden, it's not obscure. It's just mostly forgotten because we are so involved in the outside, in the world around us, in wanting that kind of connection from others, from life itself. We want to be gifted. We want to be given. We want to have all of this stuff in a world of very temporary relationships and very temporary reality. It comes and it goes and it it has oscillations, it has all sorts of conflicts and confusions, and we try to find all of our balance and harmony in a world that has no ultimate balance and harmony. It has moments of it, but there is a place that provides balance and harmony, and it's already there. You know, in the great teaching of people from the mystical traditions is go inside, go into that place from which you have emerged, and go in there and find this space that goes ah. and you can make it hard if you want most people don't even think to do it western culture is completely about the outside completely about involving yourself in the world and looking for it in the world you know you make money you find yourself in love you have children you get entertained you get all these things by in life and you think that's it but they don't last of course your ice cream cone is great while you're eating it but 10 minutes later you probably want another one or you want a glass of water you know and there's always something that follows the the joy and the achievement but the idea of going in of going into this amazing space and just being told let yourself in is incredible it's incredible because what's waiting for you there is the, the balance, the harmony, the ease, the comfort, the compassion, all of the things that you want life to give you is there. It's just waiting. And in a way, life is, oddly enough, a process of finding your way into that. Finding your way into the joy and the love of being. It's a process. And it's not a process as you think it may be to get somewhere that will finally allow you to have that because there's nowhere to get to that will do that. There's nothing you can get other than the momentary, the ice cream cone gives you literally about a minute and 45 seconds or however long it takes you to eat it of, ah, oh, I've arrived. And then you're thirsty. And then you go, oh, the water, ah, oh, that feels great. And then now what? Now we have to drive home, and we have to go do this, and we have to go do that. And life just becomes, it's a continual sort of alterations of complexities, and we relate to each one of them differently. You know, the minute you leave the ice cream parlor and you get in the car and you're driving, there's rain, and then there's, uh, you know, stoplights that 
more cars than you imagine. And then you and all that drama starts to happen. And you're caught in that dynamic and you want release from that. And you think, well, when you get home, you'll have a cup of tea and you will, you know, get watch TV, get in bed, and that will offer all this stuff. Yes, probably. But the process of going through life is not to arrive at that moment of deep, even perhaps permanent, uh, compassionate love and joy and simplicity. It's not to wait till you get home. It's to do it now. Because you can let yourself in. You can let yourself in at any moment. You know, it's not complex. It's not hidden. It's not, it's not a big deal, except for the fact that nobody thinks to do it. We all look to the outside thing. You know, if it doesn't work, give me a pill. Give me a, you know, I'll go to a meditation class and that'll do it. You know, I'll, go, I'll have a half hour of meditative quiet and oh my God, that'll be so great. Yeah, that's fine. That meditation at least is a doorway or 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 an idea of going in and you go and you get to this place and you lie there for 45 minutes and you have two minutes of like, oh, that felt good. No, that's just ice cream. You know, it's just another thing that gives you the thing you're looking for, which is always there. It's not about going out to get it. It's going in and have it or see it or recognize it or be it. And it's like nothing, Eckhart Tolle's line, nothing you're looking for is in the future. Trust me, it's there this very second. Let yourself in. Find it. It's not hard. If it was hard, it would be, you know, an unfortunate aspect of the human condition. But it's not hard. It's the easiest thing in the world if you do it. On the other hand, how do you get your mind to a place that goes, okay, welcome yourself to yourself. Welcome yourself to the inner reality of your own being. The biggest problem is most of us are not taught, especially in Western culture, that that's even possible. Everything is about future. It's all about living a life that will ultimately get you to heaven and hopefully avoid hell and things like that. And life is completely outer directed. And that doesn't really work because you can't find the harmony and the balance that will get you to this inner space. And if you live in an Eastern culture where the inner space is real, you know, it's really kind of interesting because if you become a Buddhist monk, you go into a place of deep stillness and welcome into that kind of inner world. But there's another element to that, which is there's also the outer world. So, you know, I think Rudy used to joke about the idea that, you know, you, you, you find this enlightenment in yourself after 20 years of sitting, and then you go to visit your family and point it's all gone. You know, if, you know, you can't you can't deal with your parents, you can't deal with your siblings. And all of that enlightenment kind of goes out the window. The remarkable thing about Rudy was this balance between the outer and the inner and not seeing them being really different. They're really expressions of one thing. And this reality that we live in is a harmonic, if we want it to be, or a dissonance, if we choose it to be that or, or just forget and go into dissonance but it has the opportunity of being a harmonic and all you have to do to find the harmony and find the beauty and find the simplicity of your own being is welcome yourself and go inside come let yourself in and you go oh it's that simple and almost nobody does it and i have all the reasons and excuses i've heard everything i've heard everything i even hear it in myself you know, and it's like, okay, you know, I'm so practiced, I'm, you know, 50 years of meditation, and I get in bed at night, and sometimes I have this unbelievable pain and dis discord inside myself. I don't know where it comes from. It comes out of dreamscape. It comes out of biology. I just don't know what it is. And I go, why me? Why me? I have that reaction. And and I say, what, what do I do about this? And the voice that comes to me always, and it comes from inside, it says, do the work. Just do the work. It's kind of demanding. But it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, why this voice rises up from inside? It's maybe because I've been sitting for 50 years, and I've connected to a directive that tells me do the work. But then I lie there in bed. And I do a number of things, all of which 
well, one of which you know easily, I take a breath. And then I do this thing of, I ask for help. Interesting to ask for help. Because often we think to go get a pill or we go, you know, do something else, you know, go read a book or something, but ask for help. And you can be specific, help to accept, help to surrender, you know, help to let go, whatever those lines are. But if you lie there and you ask for help, stuff happens. It rises up. It's really extraordinary. But it comes from inside, the place where you can go, where you can let yourself in. And if you let yourself in, it talks to you. And it says, in my case, do the work. And it's Rudy's voice on every level. <laughs> and it's not gentle. It's do the work. And I go, okay. And, you know, I do this mudra stuff, you know, which probably looks very weird to everybody. And I, th I think it's probably like Reiki, Reiki healing. But it, it's very powerful. And all I have to do, lying in bed, four in the morning, is go like this. My two fingers touch. And there's this like... I don't know what it is about touch, but it's like a hug. And it just warms me deeply. It opens me up. And whatever the problem was, was satisfied by that. So when you say do the work, it's not like, oh, that's please help me to surrender. All the stuff that people imagine in the drama of their life. It's just that. Touch. And I go, ah. Oh. And it's over. The opening, the connection, the contact, the sense of attunement, the sense of being helped, all there. And everyone thinks that it's going to be big and dramatic and somewhere down the road. It's immediate. It's immediate. And if it doesn't happen immediately, if you don't get what you're looking for immediately, you're going to need to practice during your day this journey inward so that you get to this place that is responsive. When they say, let yourself in, or when I say, let yourself in, you still need to have somebody greet you. Just walking into somebody's house, you hear, let yourself in. You go in and, you know, they're not in the living room, they're in the kitchen. You, know, you got to go into the kitchen and they're there cooking and you heard their voice yelling, come in, go to the kitchen. <clears throat> go to the place where you are waiting for yourself. Go to that place. And then they put down their they're whatever they're doing and they walk over and they go like this that's it's just exactly like real life real life somebody you go into somebody's house they tell you to come in and they give you a hug and you go ah and you feel so good you feel like you're in a place that you belong and then you spend the next few hours together and blanche and i've been having this extraordinarily wonderful week with lots of people coming and more following and and kind of an interesting thing because i had been feeling kind of lonely. I don't know why. I go through this aloneness thing, which I don't like. And uh, and <laughs> the universe knows I don't like it. And they give it to me because one, I can learn from it, which is a great, it's a great teaching. But then when I really kind of cry out, they just send people <laughs> and they just send, I mean, more people than I can handle. So now I have, to, now it's a balancing thing. So I can, you know, have, have it and let it go, be alone and be full. Be, the, the, two, the two are the great teachers. But I've been watching it happen. And the flow, when you are open and you have people come on in and you hug and you sit down and you talk and you share and you eat and you do all these things. And then they help you carry food to the kitchen to do the dishes. And then you do the dishes and every dish has its own placement in the dishwasher or in the sink. These, This is the moment to moment truth of life. You can't think that spiritual life is the absence of washing the dishes. It is washing the dishes beautifully and enjoying washing the dishes. And you know, and I tell you all this as though it's like a directive of, of sorts, but it's the greatest inner teaching. If it's there in front of you, it's yours and it's God. This is your work. The thing that's there, and if it's as simple as brushing your teeth, you know, and flossing your teeth and washing your hands. This is holy ground. And if you think of that as being just the mundane and everything inside maybe is holy, no, no. The holiness doesn't stop ever. It is in front of you in every single moment of your existence. And when you start to realize that, the thing you're looking for is not going to be 12 years from now. It's going to be right now. 
It's not going to be. It is. It is present tense now. And you can hear this a thousand times, but it's like you have to get to the moment of, oh, oh. And then it just floods open. It floods. And I, and I mean it. And it's a big, big awareness. And it's like you kind of want to bow down and just be amazed by this thing that's in front of you. And I talk about this a lot with you guys. You know, I talk about what it means to be in a house with windows and ceilings and coverings and safety and beauty outside and beauty or comfort inside. And it's amazing. It's amazing. And if you watch the news, you know, not everybody has that. There are people whose complete comfort zone is literally blown away. So be grateful for the one you have. And if it gets blown away, or if it's in the process of getting blown away, you've got to work with that as well and see, if you will, God in that too. And and I will give you my old man talk because I know I do that pretty weekly. It's going to get blown away. It's all going to get blown away at some point and it's not going to be comfortable and you're not going to like it and if you ever had to do the work old age is the moment to do the work because as it falls away as your body comfort falls away you can't do the stairs the way you used to do the stairs bending down to pick up the newspaper is like a real chore it's a different universe and you can't go why me god because it's everybody is going to have that if they're lucky enough to live long enough to experience that so learning to let yourself in is to go okay i have to hold on differently when i go down the stairs i may have to get a stick to pick up the newspaper or a, a clipper thing you have to find new ways to live your life and if you've ever needed help the greatest time you need help and you need to ask for help is as you get old and everything falls away the really weird thing is the memory thing falling away i mean that blanche and i are enjoying <laughs> in a way i can't say enjoying is the right word but kind of on the best days we are enjoying losing memory and it's it's kind of remarkable and if you can let, let memory go rather than have it lost let just let it go because it's going to be a process you just learn to find that the old part of your existence your old life the part of your life that caused it a lot of sort of excitement and drama and tension and all that other stuff just kind of dissipates. And all you have left as you get old is exactly where you are. And if there's ever a time to let yourself in, that's it. And if you haven't learned to let yourself in, if you haven't practiced, if you haven't said, come on in, if you haven't knocked on the door and waited for that moment, you know, you you're you're going to you're going to miss the boat because you'll get to the point where it's really lonely difficult and struggling and there's nobody out your mom and dad and everyone who used to hug you in the old days and your partner possibly is not there to hug you what do you do well i will tell you the biggest hug you have ever had is when you walk in that space the hug that in a way is from everyone you've ever loved in your whole life and everyone you might love in the future, it's all right there. This entry into your own self loves you. It loves it loves you. And when you feel that, and the cordiality of it, and the simplicity of it, and all of that is so exquisite. And so why you, people don't do that, why they don't do the work, if you will, to go in and have that attunement, that touch, it's a kind of ignorance. And of course, much of the spiritual teaching is that people live in ignorance and the ignorance is being lost in the outside and i completely understand one becomes very forgiving of everyone who's lost in the outside because one it's very compelling or very terrifying or whatever it is but boy oh boy does it grab your attention and of course we all get lost in it but if you're lucky you get initiated into some understanding that there is an inner place to go you know it when you're a baby, you're lying in that crib and you're crying and crying and somebody comes and picks you up and does this and you just let go. And why we forget that, I mean, I, I forgive all of us for forgetting it because we all do forget it, but that embrace never is really absent. And if you can allow yourself the journey of letting yourself in 
it's waiting, it's waiting for you. It's waiting there at this very instant. And if you're just going to program this into your brain and just go, well, that's interesting stuff and lock it into thought and ideas and then, you know, go about your day and have a you know, difficult day and the car's not working and this and that, then all of this is meaningless. What I'm saying is meaningless because it's not a thought to hold. It's a thing to do. Or it's a thing to, in some ways, realize. Go, oh, do the work. Let yourself in. Find the path to this space and don't make it an intellectual, theological, or emotional idea. It's a re it's a thing. You just do it. Do it. And it's exquisite. It's really worth the effort. And if it takes you 10 years, 15 years, 20 years to figure it out, you know, which unfortunately it can do, you know, well, it's worth the effort. It's worth the time. And every misstep that you have along the way, it's okay. Because it's all leading in the same direction. And, you know, Forgive me, I can you know talk forever here, but let, let me just say that the directive to do this is so given by something greater, something higher, if you will, a higher knowing, a higher intelligence, a greater being is directing you to exactly what I'm talking about. Right now it's using my voice to kind of remind you, but it doesn't have to come through this body mind at all. It's coming from everywhere. Just hear it. Just do it. And know that every second of your life is process and directing you to this unbelievable embrace of who you are. That's what it wants. It wants you to embrace it for a lot of reasons. One, because it loves you, but also because it loves everybody else. And if you get to this place in yourself or discover that you've always been there, you can share it with everyone around you. And that's how the universe works. Each one of you becomes this vessel, this vehicle, this, this ability to open to and love others and share this cosmological, eternal, blissful truth with others. Really an amazing gift. And there's nobody listening to this talk who's not capable of that. Nobody. So let yourself in, try to do what's being said here, not just listen to it or think about it, not just worry about, oh, I don't know how, or I can't do it, or why isn't it working, and oh, God, I'm no good, and what a terrible person, or what, you know, why do I fail all the time? Go on. Don't do that. Let yourself in. It's beautiful. Okay. Any any questions? I guess that's a good sign. I, I don't have everybody on the screen here, so I may have to speak. Oh yes, I do. Everybody's here. Who's left? Okay. Well, uh, whoops, <laughs> more people. But anyway, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Um, I I'm really serious about what's coming through here. Uh, you know, life is purposeless without this. It just has no value. It, I mean, it has value, but if you don't find the, the, this beauty, this capacity to embrace yourself and be embraced and to embrace others, it's not, the ride is just, you know, conflict and drama. And it's not about that at all. It's just not about that. It's too beautiful. It's too beautiful. And if you miss it, but I will tell you, uh, if, you if you're if you in trouble, give me a call. <laughs> I'm happy to call. I'm happy to talk. And uh, and there's incredible amount of love flooding into every one of you. And not a single one of you wasn't receiving. So know that you're, you got it. Enjoy it and be well. Love to you all. <laughs>